Good morning, church. I'm excited to talk to you about some of the things that we can look forward to in the future. Um, June 7th, we're going to get started. We'll be having two services, uh, one at 9.30 and one at 11. Uh, we'll clean in between the two services. We'll be practicing social distancing. We're asking you to wear masks. And you look at that and you think, well, it's a good start. Um, as I look at uh, the church and how it is going to move forward, and we're, we'll be in this together, and we'll be learning together, and we'll be uh, caring for those that are least among us, and protecting those uh, who are most vulnerable, but also we'll be getting back and getting to be the church. The first service we plan on uh, using uh, the organ and the piano, and um, having a fairly traditional service, uh, and then uh, the second service will be the praise group. Now, June the 7th is also a communion Sunday, and we've already uh, uh, purchased uh, individual units of communion so that um, we can be as safe as possible. Uh, we're trying to do the things that, that we need to do to be safe. Uh, and, uh, you know, there are different attitudes and thoughts about uh, the coronavirus, where I'm, I'm very thankful that it, it's very uh, low count, Cali County. Uh, we've been watching that. Uh, and we, uh, we do need to get back to worship. Um, I've really missed you, and I, I hope you've missed worship as well. I'm sure you have. Uh, we continue to worship, but we haven't been able to worship together. Uh, we, uh, so I really look forward to June the 7th. I also realize... One of the things I think about is, you, you know, when you talk about being socially distanced and talk about wearing the mask to worship and talk about uh, some of the concerns I have with worship, one of the big concerns has been music, uh, then I think about, okay, how can, we, um, how can we make this also a positive and a good time together? Uh, it's a step back to, to, to be able to be back in worship, and that's neat. But how can this be uh, a positive, a real positive? And so one of the things that I've thought about, and one of the things I'm excited to say uh, to you today, is that um, in the past, we've, I've tried to have once a month uh, outings. And so we had, in the past, we swam in, in August, and, uh, we, and we usually had a couple church picnics. And uh, so this year, I've already reserved the pavilion for June the 28th, and for July the 19th, and for August the 9th. And so I would encourage you to take those and put those, those dates on your calendar. And I'm going to say them to you again. June the 28th, that's not that far away. Uh, we, we, you think about it, we can have an outdoor worship service. We can be at the pavilion. We can we can socially distance at the pavilion. You guys can bring uh, lawn chairs. We'll uh, amplify the service, and um, June the 28th. Then also uh, July the 19th, and then also August the 9th. So open air services. Uh, we'll be able to sing. We'll be able to enjoy being together. Uh, we will be able to. Uh, be the church more outdoors. Uh, when you really think about it, uh, being outdoors is it, it, they're they're telling us is is safer, uh, you know, because you don't have the recycling of the air. And uh, so um, let's enjoy being together and have some fun times outside. Uh, I'm thinking about some other ideas, which uh, we'll talk to you about later. But uh, put those three dates on your calendar. And uh, th those will be those will be good dates. I'm excited about it, and uh, we're excited about getting back to getting together and being the church. The other thing that I'd like to say to you is that uh, th this sermon series on the 23rd Psalm, uh, in all honesty, it's a service that I've done before. I did it years ago in in Elkins, and of course I've tried to tweak it and adapt it for, for, for this circumstance. But as I was thinking and praying about uh, this series and giving these fireside chats, I, I, I call them here in the office, when I think about it, 
uh, I thought, you know, the 23rd Psalm would be something just to go over. And I was hoping, quite frankly, because this is a, kind of a long series, and I was hoping, quite frankly, um, to have to edit some of these services and uh, some of the sermons and not do as many of them because I was hoping to be back in the sanctuary. And I thought, well, you know, I can adapt it as we go along, which we've certainly uh, had to do. But um, the, the series has lasted longer than I'd hoped. But today I'm going to talk to you about hurt. And, uh, and then next Sunday I'll be talking to you about um, fear and the future. And, um, and, and we'll be looking at the 23rd Psalm for two more Sundays today and, ne and next week. And then June 7th, I uh, really hope and pray uh, that, that we'll be in a position where we can do that on the 7th. And speaking of prayer, let's pray right now. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your church. I thank you so much for First Baptist Church of Winfield and for the, the good people of this congregation. And I thank you for their faithfulness through this time period. I think about their faithfulness of giving and how we're still uh, definitely stable as a congregation. I, I'm thankful for the way they have pitched in in the community and helping with uh, distributing food uh, with uh, one of our members making masks and selling them and giving all that that money to uh, the food the food bank here in Winfield. I'm thankful for uh, just the, the attitudes and the graciousness of this congregation. And Lord, uh, we do long to be back together and we look forward to that day. And we, we thank you, Jesus, for the opportunity uh, to worship you. Uh, we thank you, for, I thank you for the creativity uh, and for, for some of the new experiences that we can have because of technology. I thank you for, for the the real the realization that a church is, is not a building, the church is a people. And Lord, I thank you for the people of this congregation. And more than that, Lord, I, I pray uh, for your church universal, and I pray for the planet. Uh, we experienced some, some loss, our world has changed. Uh, Lord, I pray for those who, who've had loss in their family units. Uh, we pray for those who continue to, to strive uh, in the hospitals as, as, le as leaders. We pray for the doctors and the nurses and all who work there. Uh, Lord, we thank you that uh, this virus is, has not hit Kansas harder than it could have. And we just continue to pray that uh, our, your people will be, be safe. Uh, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to know you, to love you, to be your church. I pray that as we continue to live in a new world, uh, in, in a changed world, that we might uh, discover what it means, what that means, and that we might uh, be people of patience and faith. Grow us in our faith through these moments, we pray. Lord, I pray that we might be patient with one another, that we might uh, learn to experience a, a deeper church through the midst of these moments, in Jesus' name. Amen. This uh, series uh, could be called Stress Busters, and we've, we've, taken, a look at, uh, we've taken a look at depression, uh, we've taken a look at uh, stress, we've taken a look at fear, uh, we're going to be looking at fear in the future next week, and today uh, we're going to be thinking about hurt. And all of us have been hurt at some point. And uh, we live in an imperfect world. We're hurt by accidents. We're hurt by illnesses. We're hurt by relationships. Um, and people give us the biggest, the biggest hurts. The question is, what do you do when you're hurt? Now, there's a, uh, there's a flight, or oh, the flight or fight syndrome um, where... Uh, people, uh, when they're confronted situations, they'll either fight or they'll, or they'll flight. Uh, I like to say there's another F. There's faith. And so, uh, how do we use our faith in the midst of the struggles of life? Well, there's some things not to do 
in the midst of hurt. Uh, first of all, don't ignore it. Uh, sometimes, especially in relationships, now there are times just to let things go. But one of the uh, one of the ways I determine whether or not to let something go or to or to talk about it is I I think I, I think this is is letting it go going to hurt someone else? Do you need to talk about it to you know to defend somebody to protect somebody? Um, do you uh, let it go because it's really not that big of an issue, or do you deal with it because it can be harmful and it is harmful? So don't just ignore it because there are times when people ignore things and it and it it builds up. It's like sweeping something under the rug. Eventually, and eventually the rug gets pretty uneven. So don't try to procrastinate. Psalm 139 said. I kept very quiet, but I became even more upset. I became very angry inside as I thought about it. My heart anger burned. And procrastination at times with problems can take small problems and turn them into large problems. So don't just ignore it. Learn to take our hurts to the Lord in prayer. Uh, don't, don't run from it. Uh, escapism, all kinds of ways to, to deal with stress and hurts, overeating, overdrinking, watching TV, drugs. What's your escape? Psalm 5.5 5. I wish I had wings like a dove. I just wish, wish to run away. But the problem, with running away, the problem with running away is you take yourself, you take yourself with your problem. So take it instead to the Lord in prayer. Don't try to hide your hurt. Oh, you need to hide your hurt most of the time. You don't want to be bleeding all over everyone. <laughs> but um, don't wear them, you know, don't hide your hurt. James 5.16 says, Confess your faults one to another that you may be healed. And revealing your feeling is, is the beginning of healing. When you share uh, the fact that you're hurt, then you can start the process of getting over it. Um, so take it to the Lord in prayer. Uh, learn not to become preoccupied and worry about your hurt. Uh, worry is an attempt to control the uncontrollable. And you're trying to control something you can't control, uh, you're, you're not God. You don't have to be God. So give it to the Lord in prayer. Job 5.2 says, To worry yourself to death with, re with resentment would be a foolish thing to do. Worry doesn't solve things. So the hurt only gets better when you worry and get preoccupied with it. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Don't resent it. Resentment never helps. Uh, yet, what do we do when people hurt us? We become bitter and angry and cynical. And we spend our lives. Job 18.4. We've got a scripture for each one of these. Job 18.4 said, You are only hurting yourself with your anger. Bitterness hurts you far more than any hurt you will ever receive. And bitterness kills you from the inside out. And the sixth one is don't try to bully your way through it. The bullying only shows your own insecurity. Bullying shows a lot more about the person who is being the bully than anything else. You're not in charge of everything. You don't have to be. You aren't. You're not the Lord. Take it to the Lord in prayer. What will heal your hurt? Take it to the Lord in prayer. The 23rd Psalm. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. My cup overflows. The image here is, uh, it shifts actually. Uh, Psalm 23 has, uh, Lie down in green pastures, leadeth me beside the still waters. It's very much a 
uh, sheep imagery of being in a, in a lush area and being taken care of and protected by the shepherd. But now we have the image of the table before us in the presence of my enemies and my cup overflows. It shifts from the field to a feast. And it, it also is, is dealing with how to, 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 to get through hurts. So, you take it to the Lord in prayer. How do you do that? I got three comments. First of all, you let Jesus settle the score. You take it to the Lord in prayer. You don't, you don't try to settle things on your own. You don't retaliate uh, out of your own hurt. You don't bully. You give it to God. And then when you give it to God, God will give you directions. Uh, God will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Now, David... David knew what it was like to have enemies. And the truth is, every true leader does. And the imagery of the sheep, back to the sheep, the sheep had enemies. They had wolves, they had coyotes, they had bears, they had snakes, they had ticks. They, and, and, and sheep are very defenseless animals. They don't have claws, uh, they don't run very fast. They're, they're one of the most defenseless animals uh, in creation, in the food chain. And they're not safe unless they have a shepherd and someone protects them. The job, of, the job of a good shepherd is to find a good table, to find a field, green grass. When you think about a table, you think about a table that stands up and, you know, has, has got four legs on it and we put our chairs under it, but not at that time. Uh, people would lie down to eat. They would put their elbow uh, on and their elbow for to kind of hold them up a little bit and uh, they would eat at a safe place. Now, the shepherd brings the sheep to a safe place. God says, let me handle your hurts. Romans 12, never pay back evil for evil. Never avenge yourself. Leave that to God for he said I will repay those who deserve it. Leave it to God. God is in the grace business. Now you might say, are you kidding me? I know I don't get what I deserve. Uh, Christians, you know that as well for yourself. Revenge is the Lord's. Uh, actually, uh, give it to the Lord in prayer. God is better at settling things than you are. Revenge is big business. And revenge does not work. It keeps the hurt alive. So when you retaliate against the hurt... All you really do is escalate the pain. And the only way you'll ever get the relief is to, is to pray about it, to experience forgiveness, and then to move on. And, and to move on, sometimes we deal with situations with other people, and there are steps in doing that. Uh, and, but you don't do it as a way of retaliation. You communicate with people as a way of trying to bring about peace. And trying to offer forgiveness. Forgiveness. Seek forgiveness from the Lord. Forgiveness means uh, giving my hurt to God and, and trusting God to settle things. Now, you think about you are forgiven by the Lord Almighty. And so he teaches us how to forgive. Uh, we are forgiven by God. Resentment only makes you miserable. You're going to need forgiveness in the future. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And the longer we try to get revenge, the longer we're just going to hurt. So, let God, uh, Jesus, number two, let Jesus soothe my wounds. The, the shepherds put oil on the head of the sheep for a couple reasons. Uh, sheep hate flies. Flies are a real bane to their existence. Uh, they cannot shake off the flies with their hooves or with their tail. Uh, sometimes uh, flies bother pe the sheep so bad that they even have banged their heads against stone because they're, they're going crazy from all the flies. Now, it's amazing how <laughs> 
the flies of life can really irritate you. And what the Good Shepherd does is he takes the oil, he mixes it with sulfur, and anoints the head of the sheep with oil, and it's like an insect repellent. And this represents the shepherd saying to the sheep, I will take care of your irritations. I will take care of the flies that are bothering you. I will take care of the things that irritate you. I will take care of you. The other way that oil is used, I anoint, he anoints our head with oil. He, anoint, he anoints our head with oil to take care of the irritations, uh, to, to, to be a um, repellent. The other way he takes care uh, of us through the oil is the oil is like a, a, a it heals the open wounds. It's a salve. Uh, it will protect you. It will be soothing. When Jesus, when when David says, uh, you, "Thou anointed my head with oil," he's saying that God will protect me and will soothe my wounds. He will take care of our hurts. Jesus uh, wishes to take care of the hurts in your life. Psalm 147 says, God heals the brokenhearted and the bandages, and he bandages their wounds. It's through loving God that you're able to let go of the hurts. So when you forgive someone, then the question becomes, is the hurt gone? Not necessarily. And when, when you forgive someone, the process of healing actually really gets beginning. It's kind of like breaking a bone. Uh, first, when you when you break a bone, uh, you you have to you have to have it you know put in a cast, and then after a while you can take it out of the cast and it's still weak and you still need to be careful with it. And sometimes it's put in a sling or other other uh, form of protecting it, and then. Eventually, uh, it's taken out of the sling, and you know the healing takes place. But there's still, eventually, will probably be a scar there. But um, the, the deep hurts of our lives, when we forget, when we forgive someone, uh, it takes time for us to heal. But we must allow it to heal. So, uh, how do we experience healing? Uh, learn how to be a person of prayer. Uh, sometimes in forgiveness, you know, one of, one of the stories that Jesus told us, and the disciples asked, you know, how many times do we have to forgive? Uh, uh, should we forgive once? Should we forgive three times? Should we forgive seven times? And, and Jesus says not seven times, but seventy times seven. And, and some commentaries, even that, even that passage is a little bit obscure because uh, it might be seven times seventy or seven times seventy-seven. Uh, it's, it's, I find it fascinating that in the Greek and in the New Testament, which is so specific and so dead on, this passage is a little bit obscure. And the, the numbers are a little bit obscure. And the thing that I find fascinating about that is that how many times do we forgive? And it's 7 times 70, 7 times 77. In other words, you just keep on doing it. So... Learn to pray, learn to, uh, to unload, learn to allow God to take care of, of the healing process, tell God how you feel. Uh, the Psalms are really amazing about that. David in the Psalms really tells the Lord how he feels. And sometimes uh, he tells the Lord how he feels in some pretty uh, uh, focused ways. <laughs> Uh, so, learning how to pray is learning how to give your heart, your emotions to God and to be forgiven from that and to be able to move on from that and to be healed from that. So, part of healing is learning how to pray. Part of healing is learning how to worship. Uh, there is healing and praise and singing to the Lord and focusing on, on the Lord and realizing that our lives are just not about ourselves. I really think that that, that, that is one of the, the big essences of the difference between a Christ-centered life and just a, a 
the life of the flesh, as the New Testament will call it. Because a Christ-centered life helps us to get beyond ourselves. And we learn to worship Him and to love Him. And it's about Jesus. Uh, we, we can experience healing through prayer. We experience healing through, uh, through worship. And we can he uh, experience healing through fellowship. And I think uh, that's one of the things that, that we really miss right now is, is the collective worship and the collective fellowship. Uh, learning how to support each other and to pray for each other. And one of the opportunities of, of this experience is that we need to find and use new ways of supporting and caring and loving each other. Uh, the phone calls have been good. Uh, I think it's neat that the men's group and the women's group have used uh, Zoom some and having some group meetings. And I, I do think that uh, we're going to start, when we, go, when we come back to worship, we plan on uh, videotaping and, and having one of the services at least being live so that people who are uh, still uh, uh, having to be to stay at home will have access and the good news is it's not going to be me chatting in the office it's going to be uh, more interactive and it, it will be a step forward but you know what we're, we're going to find ways to worship and fellowship together and be more creative about it and some positive things can come out of this as it, some positive things can come out of this as we wrestle with what does it mean to be the church and how can we be the church more effectively in, in a world that so desperately needs Jesus so our healing I got on a, off on a tangent there didn't I our healing takes place through prayer through worship through fellowship. Uh, it can also take place through ministry because as we start doing ministry we uh, get beyond our get beyond ourselves. So this this series has been called uh, Stress Busters is what I've called it and we're near the end of it. Um, so our thoughts are is that First, one of the first ways that we can experience healing is to let Jesus settle the score. It's not just our issue. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Uh, the second point is let Jesus soothe our wounds. And the third point is uh, let Jesus satisfy our needs. The scripture says, Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup, overflows. The imagery here is so important because if you think about it, the ancient this is this is a psalm from the ancient world and, and and water was scarce and wine was scarce and when the cup overflowed you're wasting it. And and if your cup overflows and you're not worried about it, it means that you have abundance. And so my cup overflows. I have everything I need. I have more than what I need through God. God will satisfy my needs. Uh, scripture says in Romans 15, God will help you overflow with hope through the, the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, scripture says in 1 Thessalonians 3:12. May the Lord make you, your love grow and grow to overflowing. And, and John 16 says, uh, You can have joy. Ask using my name and you will receive it. And your cup of joy will overflow. So church, realize that in Christ our needs will be satisfied. And in Christ we can experience healing and in Christ, uh, we can overcome the struggles of, of, our, of our lives. Uh, church, one more week. I'm actually looking forward to the, the next sermon uh, because it talks about the future and it's, it's going to be... Uh, uh, it's, and it, it's the ending of Psalm 23. I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It's a very, very powerful uh, passage of Psalm 23. And we'll do that next week. 
And then, uh, I am so looking forward to being back together with you, and to interacting with you, and to worshiping with you. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you. Uh, we thank you for your church. We thank you for what you have in store for us. We thank you that in you, in you we have security, we have hope, we have forgiveness, we have the empowerment to overcome our fears, we have the empowerment to overcome our hurts, that in you is, is the abundant life. And Lord, we, we thank you for it, we praise you for it. I, I pray for your church that not only will you keep us safe, but empower us to share faith and to find ways to be examples of hope in the midst of a world that so desperately needs you. Lord, help us to use these, these moments of life right now for your glory and to bring you glory. In the precious name of Jesus, amen.